taken off where we left off. Um, what I have done, uh, I think the last video we just put this little tab on, put the two bolts in. Um, I did do a little bit. I took and cut the 4x4. Four four. I cut it off. And what I did is I cut it off uh, that much, that much, because that used to sit down on there for the right ride height that we wanted, I guess, or what I was going for. So, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, the bag that I have, I just kind of figured it out. I never really looked at it too much. Um, I've helped bag a few cars. We bagged a few cars. Wasn't right on it because I wasn't there exactly. But, you know, let's keep, let's get real. Um, you make the mounts where they have to go to make it work, and that's what I'm doing, and that's what will always be done, I guess. But as I see this airbag, this is a very, this seems to be a cheap airbag and small airbag. I must get it checked out to see what what the ratings are. I don't know if it has the ratings on here or not. Can't see that well either. Should put me glasses on. But anyways, as I have this bag here, um, this this is what I'm thinking. This where the where the four x four is sitting on top of. We're calling it the radius arm. It's sitting on top of that. This is not exactly what I want it to look like, but that's where it's going to be. I'm going to cut that off and you know make it fit with the arm, make it look nice. I might even do something on the end of it to make it to finish it. But as I'm looking at that, I had to put a screw from under the bottom to screw the piece of four by four so it would stay in place. There's a, quite a hole in the bottom in there. There's probably well a bigger hole than that on the bottom of that arm, and that's where. where when I make a plate, I'll make a plate on top of this radius arm, a little bit bigger than this bag, we'll say probably half inch bigger than this bag, and then I would drill a hole in it and then I could bolt it up through. So what I would do is come up through this hole on this arm, and then the, and the, and the little tiny plate I would make is right where this 4x4 four four is sitting on top of this radius arm. That's where the airbag's going to sit. That's, this is only what I'm thinking is going to sit there, and then this bolt is going to go up through and the plate that's welded on there, I'll bolt it up through the bottom to hold the airbag in place. Okay, so I'll bolt that on there. You can see that now. And on the top, where the 4x4 four four is, it goes right up inside this hat. I'm going to have to make something that comes out. I, I don't like all this hidden stuff that's going on that I got going there. I put it for structure so it wouldn't bend. But the hat is way back on the frame, so I'll probably end up modifying this and making it so I can see the bag and what it's doing and clear everything out of the way because I wouldn't want it chafing on anything. So this would come up through, if you could picture it, come up through this hat. This nut, you know, that's going to go up through the hat. And then this nut will screw down on top of it to hold it in place. And then there's where my airline will come out. That's basically it. That's what I'm thinking. So as I'm doing this, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, the radius arms are really making me happy more and more I think about it. I haven't done much with it, but they're making me happy. What was I going to do? I was going to go to this side. I was going to grab... I started cutting these, and I'm, now I'm going to put them in. So now I'm going to show you exactly on this side. This is just for suspension. Just hold it in place. What, I have, what I've got going on here is, is... This is the arm that's coming out. So this arm... This arm here is only going up and down. And yes, the little bit of travel, that, or the two inch travel that it's gonna have, it might change pivot a little bit, but this, that's what it is, that's what factory is. On this front end that I have made, this is factory stuff. The arm on the bottom is a factory piece. The, the piece on the top, the top arm is a factory piece, but I have modified it. I made a video on that, modified it. Um, the cross member is just a piece of channel iron, I'd say probably 3 16 maybe even a little thicker. Yeah, probably a little thicker. It's a piece of angle iron on one side and a piece of angle iron on the other side. If you ever look at this setup, this is way stronger and than what the original is, way stronger by a little bit. Um, and also, the cap, the cap or the hat is way thicker than original. So I'm o I feel like I'm okay there. Um, this bar here is not original but it's stronger than the original, I'm sure of. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm hoping that um, I can just get it going plumb up and down. That's what I'm hoping for. But as I got this piece of 4x4, this is where the airbag, the airbag will go up inside of here, 
and set on top of this radius arm. I'll have to put a, like I said, I put, I'll put a pad there. There's a small hole there. You can see there's a hole coming up through there. So that's where I'll put my bolt up through the hole and I'll screw it up through the pad onto the airbag to hold it in place. On the top, it'll go up through the pad, up through the top, and then I'll put a nut on top of it and that'll hold the bag in place. I, I would like to be able to take off, when I take off the body, then I can really see how everything's going to work. And then I can modify and change as I fly. Um, that's basically what's going on here. I'm modifying and, and uh, building on the fly. Um, nothing is for sure. There's a bunch of stuff that I'm going to fix that I have got done at the present moment that I'm going to try to keep in mind when the body comes off. I will keep in mind when the body comes off, I'm going to fix it. And, but I, I do not let it stop me from continuing on, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. I'm still going to build as, as quick as possible. You know, I mean, for the videos, you know, I'm going to do what I can during the day when we have. And then I'm not going to let anything stop me. Then I'll fix it in the, in the proper time when I get the proper, when I, you know, when I can see everything. That's the time to really go at it. Um, when I get the body off, then I can really watch the, the front wheel come down and watch the bag work and, and do all that stuff. While I'm laying on the ground underneath the fender, um, it's hard to tell. Also, it would be nice to be able to watch it work as I make it work, if you know what I'm trying to say. And then I can make the top mount for the bag in the perfect spot. And that's why everything's sort of tacked up right now. Uh, as I have that hooked on there, now I've got the suspension. That's the suspension, actually, the, you know, the 4x4. Four four. So the 4x4... Four I can measure how long it is, and then I can measure the bag, and then I would know. Well, let's take, let's put it in here, for instance. Let's put it in here. So the bag, you can see right now, if I had the plate on top of, I'll put it on this side. If I had the plate on top of the arm, and there's my hat, um, I've got that much. It's almost, well, we're probably an inch higher, and we probably should be two inches. It should be two inches for a drop. So whatever I, I build it in the air, wherever the suspension I think it, I'm building it to, um, generally when you drop it on the ground, you'll drop about two inches. And I've got a little bit of, better of an inch there. I think the bag's a little higher. It might be perfect. <laughs> it might be. I just don't know. You know, that bag looks, what can I say? Looks small, but that doesn't mean anything at all. I mean, what, it, what it's rated for is what I'm going to go with. I come up earlier looking at the brakes. I was going to put the brakes on, but there's no sense in that. I am think I'm just going to shove, shove, the ro shove the drums back on and go with it. I don't think I need a backing plate, I don't think. That's what I think I'm going to do. So now we got suspension. Um, I, I put it so we can bolt a wheel on it. Then we can let it down. Then we can let it down. <laughs> I'll get a nut for that. Um, I, I remember looking for nuts for those, and it was quite a time. There's one there, and there's a plastic one somewhere. A plastic nut. Where is that bad boy? There it is. And we didn't have one, so... I'm not going to try to find another one. I'm just putting it on there to put the wheels on. That's all I'm doing. Sticking it on there to put the wheels on. And also, we don't, I don't want to get the brakes all dirty. It was just, got a little anxious there, you know what I mean? And pulled them out because that's what we have. And uh, that's what we have. And I was just checking them out. I'd, but I'd, I'd rather put them on the end. I'd rather get this all modified and dealt with. Right now, uh, it will not steer with both wheels because the, I could put the, yeah, I can put that on. Uh, I made a rod from before, put it on from the front. Now I can put it on the back if I want the wheels to steer together. That's basically it. I'm just going to stick that on there like that. It was too easy, wasn't it, baby? I'm going to take this back and play it off. Get not get rid of it, but put it to the wayside. I'm going to go to the other side. Put that one on. Ba, ba, ba. I don't know what the nuts for the back and plate. So, um, Jolene's uh, Bugatti 
will have will be prob well it'll be the only I shouldn't say that. I don't know if the new ones get air ride or not. Do the new Bugattis have air ride? If it if it if it doesn't, yours will be the only Bugatti in the world, the only steel Bugatti in the world that has air ride. Jolene was saying that she liked it, how it was up in the air like this. When she looked at it, she liked it. And I said, uh, wouldn't you like it better if it was up in the air but on the ground? <laughs> I think it would look better myself, up in the air but on the ground. See what's going on here. We'll put that one in there. We'll put that one in the front, and we'll see what happens. We don't need that seal, obviously. Well, come on, girl. That's our problem last time, too, I think. Should hold the wheel on. Yeah, so I'm pretty stoked about the airbags. I think the airbags were $35 a piece, I think. I might even put, I might put a couple in the back, I'm not sure. The weight is amazing, how much weight you would save compared to a coil spring. The weight is amazing. Um, what else I wanna say about it? I'm not going to run air ride through the whole car so she can go up and down. No, I don't wanna do that. I would just like to ru run a air line and then have a valve where she can pump it up and that'd be the end of it. Um, if you're going to a show, you would let the air out of it that's fine. You're not going to get inside and pump it up. No, it's not going to house the air compressor. It's not going to house all that stuff. But what it will do is it'll house this place where she can pump it up. And that will be, should be prepared for that to happen. And that's the way I'd like to have it. I don't want all the gauges and all the things running everywhere. I just want a bicycle uh, plug-in where you put the air in and pump the car up and then you drive it. That's what I would like. But when she shows it, I would like it to be able to go over the top and be able to let it down on the ground and say, who would ever build a Bugatti and then put air ride in it? That would be us. What a baby. That would be us. So as I have that on here, the front end is... The front end is making me very happy, to be honest with you, because I think it's mocked up, you know, for where it needs to go. The biggest thing is the rack and pinion now. The rack and pinion is going to be the biggest problem I'm going to have. And uh, it'll be what it's going to be. It will either, it'll either be uh, up, around, over, down, under, or cut, or whatever it takes to put it in there, and that's what will happen. The, having, having the adjustment on the back of that arm makes me very happy. I don't even know if I'm going to put the other radius arms in. I think I'm just going to make them fit, make them work. And then I can say I built it, I designed it, I engineered it, I did whatever it needed to be done to have it done, spending no money other than using stuff that we had here that, well, that I found. That makes me happy for some reason. I don't know why that makes me happy, but it makes me happy. The only thing that makes me happier is when I wake up in the morning and Blondie looks at me. Happy, happy, happy. Uh, if, you have not, if you have not read the article about Jolene um, on the page, she is quite a business lady and uh, she's growing every day. Uh, I know this because she works every day on things. Uh, mark my words, Jolene is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I guarantee it. You'll see her name more and more and more and more just because of the work that she's putting in and the dreams she has. Looks good on you, baby. You're even a better camera taker. But anyways, as we're going here, this is what's going on. And I, I, I noticed that last time I was working on this wheel, that that wheel looked like it was a little further ahead in the wheel. I didn't, I didn't want that. 
and I'm hoping that we can make an adjustment there to make that work. That makes me happy to have that all back together with the radius arm welded on the frame. I enjoy the look of the radius arm with the look of the fender. The fender's kind of out like this, and then you look in there and you see the radius arm going like that. We can put holes in it. We can do anything we want with it. On the front radius arm, we can decorate that any way we want to. And as we're doing this, that's, that's the time when you do stuff like that. I want to put rivets all along the chassis when we pull it off. I want to do that. Um, yeah, that's what's going on, and it's going pretty good. I also have, I have the rod that went across when we were steering it. It was just across the front, now it's across the back, so I can connect both wheels together. I can connect both wheels together, so we can, we can drive it up or roll it up in the corner there without all the wheels taking off. And all I did is weld a bolt on this end, weld a bolt on this end, shoved it up to the tie rod ends. And uh, we, had, we have, uh, we have uh, two wheels that roll together. Is there any chance, maybe you go on the other side, just hold on to that bar, then you'll see it even better, really. Just hold it up so it don't rip the other bolt nut off. Just hold that up. Thank you. I'll be right over. Thank you. So that would connect, or that is going to connect our front end together. See how I got that? So the wheels are going straight. That just goes up in there, and that when I turn the wheels, that means both wheels are turned together. Look at that now, would you? You couldn't ask any better than that, could you? Huh? So look at that. It's right underneath the radiator. Look where that goes. It goes right underneath the radiator uh, to, to slide that along. I don't like that much, but it lets me know what I got to go through when I'm laying in bed and I'm being very quiet. That's what I'll be thinking about. How am I going to run that rack and pinion through there without, without any problems? And uh, that time will tell, I'm, you know, when the body comes off. That is my biggest problem right now. I had the rack and pinion on it before. But the rack and pinion before didn't have the radiator. So when the radiator get, got involved, the radiator trumped the rack because the rack I can fix when the, when the body's off. The radiator I cannot do with the body off. I have the, the body on. So it trumped. That's why we went there. And as you can see, this is another thing we've got to do right now. Uh, I'm going to put a wheel on that, and then we'll check and see if it's going to hit. What's that? I let Fiend in. Hello there, girl. Hello. So we'll take these, let's take this up back. You can learn so much from like magazines, like, and I'm learning so much from different cars I look at, you know, the English cars and, you know, these are the magazines that I've looked through, like, I think all my life. You know, Rod Z, old, or, Car Culture Deluxe, uh, Rodden Culture. Um, I've met that lady there before. That's CP's car. I've met CP before. I'm a supporter. I'm a supporter. Um, you know, cool, eh? Just books that I look at that, you know, give you ideas. And uh, it's, it's crazy because now that we're looking at some of the newer, or some of the, you know, English cars and French cars, I've got so many more ideas. You know, I had ideas before. Uh, I really liked the 50s customs. But now, <laughs> but now, I'm, I'm so, what can I say? I'm so, uh, we'll go on this side so you get the lighting or the lights there. We got... I'm getting so now that I like them all and I take design from them all. And that's basically what you do, you know. You take something that you see that you like and then, then you try to make it a little bit different for what you think you'd like to see on it. You can change it a lot, you can change it a, a whole bunch, you can whatever, but uh, he's going there for to keep that wheel on. All right, so I'm just going to hold it here. We're going to turn it. If you want to come take a look, we're looking to see if it hits the bar, baby. I got to put a bolt on it. I got to nut it on the wheel, nut the wheel on. I got to nut the wheel on a little bit. 
And if we have to put a spacer on it or anything like that to make it work, that's what we'll do. That's, that's what we'll do, won't we, babe? We'll do whatever needs to be done to get it done. Won't we, Fina? Huh? You know. You tell them. You know. I'm with you. Me and you know. I know that. Anyways, here's, I'm going to turn the wheel, and we're going to see if it's going to hit the radius rod in the back. And that's where it would touch it, just like that. So, I'm thinking, I don't know, I don't even know if it would turn that far, to be honest with you. <laughs> to be honest with you. But, if we have to, that's, that's, a, that's a good turn for me. That's a good turn. Right. Let's turn right there without hitting. That's a good turn radius for me. Um, if we need to come out any, any further, we'll put a little, we'll put a, a wheel spacer behind it. Will we not, sweetheart? We'll put a wheel spacer behind it. That radiator's just in there bouncing. I don't know why that's bouncing. Oh, okay, I know why it's bouncing now. Um, the radiator's in there bouncing because our bar going across, it turns the wheels is right hard up against the bottom. But that's what's going on. That looks pretty good there. Um, the, the turn radius seems fine. We can bring that wheel out just a little bit if we wanted to. Probably bring, probably bring it out a little bit more than it is now, could we not? Um, and we would do that with a wheel spacer. So I think the, the turn radius is fine. Well, I know it's fine. Uh, do you want to put doubt in your brain? If you have doubt in your brain, write it down. <laughs> All right, so that's what's going on. I'm just trying to figure out the front and uh, putting the wheels on it. I'm going to have to try to get some, a wrench there and tighten them up. It's going to be nice to get all four hubcaps on it. I want to thank Jeff, our wood guy. He's been pumping us hubcaps, and we get to pick whatever ones we like. You know, and he's also said, if you want new, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Huh? But he's been pumping them to us. We've got a couple of nice ones there. Doug did the centers. If it wasn't for the few in the club that we've come to know, we wouldn't be this far along. I can tell you that right now. I want to thank Hub and Liz. They had the, they had the interior over there they give us. You know, it's just kind of falling together. This car is, is falling together. And we are only working on it when we make videos. So I'm, I'm letting you know that we are. See, I don't know if the front end is going to fall or not. Now, to me, that's got to come back on that side just a little bit to make that nice, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I don't know. Looks pretty good, though. I mean, let's face it. It looks real good. It's just that's what I'm thinking. Um, so now I can actually I can let it down. I don't want to let it down right now. I don't want to. So I don't think I'm going to. But uh, that's what's going on with it. The front end is, yeah, I, I don't even think we'll use those other bars. I think we're going to go with what we have. I have to make a mount in the front, one more mount in the front. Maybe next time we do a video, we'll do the, maybe we'll start putting the rear end in. We'll start putting the rear end in and getting it down slowly and getting it over there and maybe getting the things I need to have done. I still have to do some sanding, obviously. Not... Doing the, what's that? Yeah? All right. You want me to get back into her? All right, let's do it. I'll put some, I'll put some bolts on her. We'll drop the front end down. We'll drop the front end down. I get these put on here. What's that, baby? Well, we'll do a little bit more. Nobody wants to watch a, an hour that's got 20 minutes. Huh? Nobody wants an hour. I'm just going to tighten this center up a little bit more. Just because it's not on there all the way. Just to tighten her up a little bit more. You know, a mean man. The airbags on a car, like to me, um, I, we, we did a couple airbags during the season, the first season. We did a couple airbag cars. 
Uh, didn't get so much into the airbag. I was more or less fabricating the body, trying to get that done. But what I will say is that uh, yeah, I'm not quite up on. I'm, well, I, I'm not up on everything. I don't know everything. But as I get into these, these the bag, that bag there, yeah, it's small, and I'm hoping that it would do the trick. I'm hoping. I'll find out the specs on it before I use it, but uh, that's, yeah, it's for an 18-wheeler of the bunk of the truck, I think, and uh, what I was thinking is um, the bunk's probably, you know, that, that would be a couple thousand pounds, and that's resting on it. If that's good for a couple thousand pounds, we've got a 600-pound Jaguar engine in there. I think you can tell by, or you can, <clears throat> how's that go? You can... Uh, you can find out what things weigh on what, what, what the engine weighs on, on a site, I think. And I think the engine, the Jaguar engine is 600 pounds. So if we had something that on a couple thousand pounds on either side with air, and I got, we should be fine. I, I'm thinking we'd be fine. Ooh, ooh, the suspension I got coming down. Can't do that now, Chetty. Can't do that now, Chetty. Put that wheel on. Now what I've got going on is I just pulled that down some. <clears throat> oh well. That'll go back up in its own time, will it not? That'll go back up on its own time. You can see, if you want to come over and take a look, you can see how I got that piece of wood screwed up to the hole on the bottom. See that, baby? Cool. That means everybody else can see it. Doesn't it? Yeah, so that's what's holding that in there. And that's how I would nut the airbag on. I don't know if I've had the wheels tight on this thing or not ever before in my life. Going in here, I want some whole crowd, I want some penetrant man. I want some penetrant. I never really had anything. Everything was half-assed. Everything is still half-assed. It's just uh, we'll clean her all up in the end. How's that? Half. I just had that can. I take it over there, side, so didn't. Trying to get the wheels on. Come on now. I'm not going to try to get him on any further. It's only holding them on to walk to go over there, I guess. Oh, it works. All right, we're just going to push some stuff out of the way. Push some stuff out of the way. Jolene has not seen her car on the ground for quite a long time, have you? Huh? I don't know why we're doing it today, but we are. <laughs> I know why we are. Because we're going forward. Right, baby? She said this hour hasn't got 222 minutes. A broom. Where'd that nice broom go? There it is.
Yeah. If it wasn't for my mistakes, I wouldn't know half of what I know. <laughs> it's funny, eh? But it's true. If it wasn't for mistakes, I wouldn't know half of what I know. Hope we don't find out any putting this car down. Some stuff over here. Your light, Vina. Get out of that. Sometime later. I'm going to pull your light out of there, babe. Maybe that's what I'm going to do. body mount before I got to put in there. Can't let that down before I have a body mount in there. Put my suspension back up in place. together. Radiator's not hitting. Oh, that one's down now. Okay, good. I guess what I have to do now is I have to make a body mount underneath. Um, that's how she goes. That's how she blows. I'm going to leave it as that. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Share, like, comment, and press that bell. I guess there's people that I don't know if there's people that are, come on the live chat early. Come on and meet some other people. Come on and chat it up and tell them what you think. Um, exactly, you know, ring that bell, I guess. Ring my bell, ring my bell. Remember that song? I like that one. Ring my bell, ring my bell. That's what kind of day it is. Jolene made me do it. Jolene, uh, put the camera up because Jen has showed up. He hasn't been here since uh, how many months know. from Burwick? How many months from uh, December? Just since December, he has not left Burwick. Yeah. First time he's well, come here. Close to Burwick, anyway. This is the engine that we bought from Jim. He is giving us the story. Oh. 45 years is not uh, Well, it was late 70s, and buddy that owned it uh, had my grandfather order a gasket set kit for it. And uh, it came in and it was hundred dollars and a little bit of time went by and he never showed it up and picked it up because it was sick and then he died. Okay. And I got, eventually I got the, the gasket set kit and then I bought this motor from his, the buddy's grandson. Okay. I and think he give, come here and give me the radiator. Oh, is that right? Brian Harris. I, I, I think that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, um, he wasn't really a mechanic because when he unbolted things, oh, did you? Did he lost I, did all I tell the nuts and bolts. Did I tell you? And... Did I tell you something? Neither am I. <laughs> um, actually, um, when I watched your guys' video, did you like that? Um, I didn't put in any comment because I know how scared I am in the mechanic world. I don't, I triple check every single thing I do, and I like when I work on things. I like I like to be able to adjust then continue, then go back and readjust, and then continue a little bit more, and then find adjust and go back and find adjust. I hate these things that you have to put in 100% and then move on and you don't go back. Yeah, well, we were trying to- I find to... all of a sudden then I have to dismantle to go back because I made it wrong. We, uh, we, we were trying to get it repaired as quick as possible, obviously. You're making, you're making a video. You don't want people to wait to see what the pistons look like. Yeah. Four or five hours later, but we end up, we got quite a bit of work done, actually. We got all Did the it have much of a ridge? Or? No, it had no ridge at all. That yeah. thing seems like yeah, the crank has got no wear on it, it seems like. 
the pistons had no ridge, ridge or the, you're probably safe. No ridge on the top of the block coming out. Um, I think so you pistons, left the crank in. Yes. And you're good. not touching the mains. No, I don't think. Because the, front really and the middle ones, you can take them off yeah. and just torque them back on. But the end ones, if mm -hmm. you take them off, then you mess with the gaskets or the seals. Okay. And sometimes it's quite a little job to put the seal. Like in some motors, it's a it's a all state almost impossible to get the seals in properly. Well, it was, you know, was, and see if you take the end seals out, that's messing, or the end bearings out, that messes with the seals. We've had quite a time with it. I'm learning lots. How's that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? Unfortunately, um, my belief on valves yes. is valves are sort of like uh, bearings. Yeah. When you wash, uh, say, a roller bearing in Barcel and blow it off, yeah. if it's shiny with no pits, it's like new. But if it's dull, throw it in the garbage can. It's only good for like a boogie wheel on a skidoo. <laughs> or a tractor, boogie, boogie, boogie. Or some <laughs> slow move part on a tractor. Okay. But in a fast moving, like a wheel bearing, on something that runs fast, like yeah, an yeah. antique car, you can have dull bearings in the wheels and grease them up, put them back in, and you can, three or four lifetimes later, yeah. re-grease it. But you put that in a Corvette or a Mustang, and you're gonna be off the road. Like, it'll seize up and lock up the wheel in no time, because uh, war bearings are not, doll bearings are 90% gone. So, valves and valve guides are the exact same thing. When you look on the valve, it's gotta be shiny, smooth, like chrome. If there's any scuffs on it, it means it's wore out. And if you look down the guide, it's supposed to look like chrome as well. So if the guide is all dull and your and your seat or the stem on the valve is all dull, that's 90% wore out. Even if it's tight, it won't last. It's got to be shiny like a bearing. I didn't look it over that close. Now, but we did, if we you did don't drive it 50, 80,000 miles and expect it, Horsepower and well, run started that look at it, that's a good engine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like it depends on what you want the motor for. But if you want it for performance and long life, yeah, the valves are the first things that wear out on all motors. Almost every motor that, when it comes time to it's get some motor, get some miles, usually the valves and the valve guides are the most war part, other than the cam in the head, because. That's where the oil pressure doesn't get there and cold engine starts scuff the cam in the head, right? Well, it's been experienced, Jim. It's but, been um, experience. Like my 41, that 40, 40 Chev truck, I re had the head rebuilt. All the valves were tight and they looked like new to me and the cylinder head guy that did my engine, did the valve job for me. He looked at it and said, they may be tight. There's only like 3,000 play. They're almost perfect. But see the dullness? That means they're gone. So he put new guides in it and I uh, put all new valves in it and they're all chrome and now that motor, the valve train is worth like four in, four bodies. Like it won't last the entire truck. Know what I mean? Where'd you get that done? Damn TK right down below yeah. you? Okay, yeah. cool. He's done those. Okay. Um, but he's a little expensive and he's over fussy. Wow. Which uh, is good but bad. Know what I mean? He probably wouldn't be good for me. It'd be too much money. <laughs> well, uh, like I said, I, I like that old 40, you know, the overhead valve, yeah. uh, 40 Chev engines, engine that I put together. Uh, I put all new rockers, push rods, um, the rocker shaft, and all new valves, all new guides, and he redid the seats and had it planed. And one of the thing you probably won't have a problem with. It. And like, as I said, um, I did bore it out, everything looked good there, but the connecting rods all had a little bit of play, and the crank, everything, they nice and shiny, perfectly square, no scratches, but they are all, you can feel play. And Chev, when they put, when they pour the bad bearings, they do a very friendly thing, like they're thinking farmers are buying this, they do, they wanna do their own maintenance, so they put like, um, 10,000 worth of shims between the cap and the connecting rod. So you can just shim it down. So you just, I just took out half the shims and plastic aged it, got them around two, two and a half, and put it back together nice and tight. Now He that, came along good with that, didn't he? Pulled the old plastic you know, cage on me. 
but a lot of <laughs> lot of manufacturers never did that, and wh which means you drive it forty thousand miles, your connector rods are loose. There, what do you do? You got to buy new connector rods because yeah. they're bad. They're not inserts. Cool. Didn't, Back in the didn't old know days, that. you know, like uh, from nineteen forty on, most engines were inserts. But from 1940 back, they were bad at bearings, uh, bad, bad at poured right in the connecting rod. And that means when there's war, you had to buy new connecting rods to turn your crank. There you go. Because you couldn't buy inserts. Okay. So that was a big, big improvement. A big jump, you could just buy inserts. Yeah, and them. then turn the crank and you yeah. had brand new again. Gotcha. But anyway, that's, no, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm what? Impressed. Um, I'm impressed, <laughs> that um, but hard. I wasn't overly impressed with you guys pulling the head off and having the engine totally in the air off the oil line. <laughs> you know, that, you don't do that. <laughs> the oil line is not supposed to lift up a thousand pound engine, you know, like. It you, wasn't. Well, yeah, <laughs> the back of the engine was airborne and then, oh, oh, drop it back down. Then you unhook the, yeah, the oil line and then the head came up. See, that's a mistake I'll never do again, probably. Yeah. Well, it, it handled it. It was a good test. <laughs> Made for good TV, didn't it? You're um, probably just hard at TV. Yeah, I, I didn't dare. Get that it. oil line off! It's bad enough that I'm even <laughs> speaking my mind right now. <laughs> I didn't you know there. what? Me and Jolene watched it. We, we almost cried watching because me and Doug were just a wrestling with it, right? And we didn't, like, we obviously didn't see it. We obviously didn't see it. Yeah. And we were just a wrestling with it. Me and Jolene watched it. We were in tears, crying. But, um... Like, the rule is, uh, don't force it. Use a bigger hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it is what it is. You I know hope I mean? you mark the I, cams. I've got a reading I've, on that before I, you I've, I've, done, I've done a lot worse, believe me. But, yeah, the, all that stuff. Doug, yeah, Doug's taking care of that. Okay, okay. because it's I'm crucial that the cams get timed back exactly in the right spot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Doug's the one that did the engine in this one. He rebuilt oh. the engine, but, you know what I'm saying, he's a hobbyist. It's not like he's full-time Jaguar mechanic or anything. He's learned that he's go-to, uh, goes, obviously, but it's funny, you know, to watch us scramble when the camera comes up trying to get something apart. Yeah. You know, that's basically what it is. You know, You're trying to get it apart so you can get it done. Like the Hudson that I restored and... Um, here's the fact. Uh, uh, it took me like Give me the six, facts, seven or eight years to restore it. Yeah. Thousands of dollars. I rebuilt everything the best I could. Yeah. Like spent money galore, extra parts and all. Did you make any mistakes? Uh, yes, and <laughs> that's why I like the rule of get it in close and then continue and then go back and readjust a little bit. I, yeah. I like the procedure of back and forth. Back and forth. Adjusting until you get it just right. I hate putting things together tight and then moving on and then having to take everything back apart to go back in. But see, in most mechanic work, you put it in 100% and then you move to the next step. Like you can't get back in there yeah. after you've got the engine assembled. I was saying, I'm doing the exact same the front end. I'm just tacking everything, trying to get everything in place. Yeah, because you. And then when I pull it off, then I'll be able to really get it. It's hard to adjust after yeah. if you put everything in a little yeah. bit wrong. There you are, you have to do the mini grinder thing. You know. I heard you're a proud owner of a running Ferrari that's finished. Um, all but blinkers and dry daytime running lights. Which what do you need, blinker fluid? Never, the blinkers in the front. I don't I get you blinker fluid. Well, I need blinker. <laughs> I need to put blinkers in it, in the bumper. Okay. And I'm hooking it up to daytime running lights because it never had daytime running lights. It had flashlights. Like so you get everything when you, when you go there and you turn around? Uh, everything, as far as I know, the interior's in. All uh, cars done at this time. I, I may have to, some tuning situations in the summer when I run it a little bit, but... Um, as far as I know, everything's done. The stereo works. The interior's all back in. Awesome. And everything's all tight and good and all in around the inner fenders and the hood and radiator. Everything's done except for headlight, uh, daytime running lights and blinkers in the bumper because I you'll can't afford to but replace them with Ferrari. You'll be, you'll be Tom Selleck this summer. Yeah, way too much money. And I'm running out of money. Uh, you'll, you'll have to between cat food, food and dogs. I cleaned up my kitchen today. And um, roughly these little cans of cat food, which I yeah. wash out and I, I collect in the other part of the house in bags before I put them out to the garbage, yeah. um, are almost a dollar a piece. And I have thousands of them. 
and I have bags, 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 bags of empty tobacco bag uh, pouches. What do you think? We're recycling them somehow? Hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Like um, my old age pension, which I get because uh, I'm 61, uh, $500 a month pays for my tobacco. It doesn't pay for my cat food. Cat food. And that's coming out of my bank account. The Ferrari doesn't stand me as much as the cat food and the for <laughs> and by tobacco use. But the tobacco use of the cats are putting me, so I had to go back to work on the farm. You going back to work already? Well, I pretty well have to. I'm running out of money. I'm running out of money faster. Like I can't even afford my house taxes and putting this Ferrari. I can't for I can't put two cars on the road this summer. But anyway, going back to the Hudson, I spent eight years refining it. It's done, and with just minimum amount of care, that will outlast three generations of mankind. Awesome. Yet, my little yellow cobalt out there is no eight, and it's got 116,000 kilometers on it, and uh, I managed to make it past safety inspection by welding up the sills and the frame a little bit, yeah. but in another two years, it's going to Harold Reeves Junkyard. That's and that was a brand new car, uh, like 12 years ago. Wow. And it's gonna be in the junkyard in two years time. And then I spent eight years of my life building this Hudson, which nobody wants because, you know, it's so restored. Want that bad boy. Well, I don't know, it, they're welcome. It's there, it's for sale, I need the money. <laughs> but anyway. Do you need to sell you what, 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 oh, that what, is, it? what is it? But it's what a year? Four, 46 Hudson, three quarter ton. Uh, truck but it's, it's restored not modified it's restored it's all original you know it's got the 31? original uh four, 46 1946 studebaker hudson 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 truck three quarter ton truck but i got i changed the springs in it to make make it more of a half ton okay. so it's a little lower but um, it's restored, but it's not hot rod. It's, it's, it's a good looking truck. Yes, it's but- the, um, can, the, can, the can that sits higher in the back. The we truck. don't need to restore cars to last three generations of mankind. I'm not really. sure. No? Not really, no. If they last, like, um, like you fix up your house and you put a roof on it so that it'll outlast you. But you don't really do it so that it'll last 200 years. You do it so it'll last the next 20. Yeah. But when you restore a car, the hobbyist has to be so perfection, like everything, like you don't miss spots. You don't, you don't uh, turn a blind eye on anything you don't like. Like you make sure every detail is done inside and out. And then there it is, it sits there while you work on something else. And and you don't have time to drive it. You're too busy building them. And like now you've got where you've got a building full of cars and you're still building them. And you can't possibly, even if you can afford to insure them all, you would have to stop working on them to have any fun. Because you would have to, like you to drive them all. <laughs> we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pile them on top of each other, baby. <laughs> yeah. Now we're gonna make them we're gonna we're all gonna pile on top of each other. Yeah, but I don't know. It like uh yeah, it was kind of depressing this morning cleaning up the kitchen and all these cat cans and tobacco tins and what are you thinking, uh, poaches. But the kitchen kind of looks a little better. I can actually walk around the kitchen table now. And the kitchen table is cleaned off right down to the actual wood on the table <laughs> for the first time for at least 11 years. I, wow. I found some things I haven't seen for 10 years. On like, the table? On the kitchen table. Lost <laughs> items, lost things that... Uh, I've been looking for right on the kitchen table okay. underneath this much junk. Wow. But anyway, uh, Wait for it. I don't know why I did it. I, I think I uh, must be delirious today. Is, Is that right? Well, I wouldn't do it if, if it's I only was, one day a week. I would not clean the kitchen table off if I if there wasn't something wrong with me. You need, you usually must need I'm something. quite occupied at the garage and quite inspired. I don't care if the kitchen table gets cleaned off or not. But today I spent hours and I must have went into the coal part of the house at least 50 times with boxes and bags of junk. Uh, now, the other part of the house doesn't look too attractive, but it didn't look <laughs> too good anyway. But now at least the kitchen where I'm living in looks a little better. But I guess we have to pick our fights and and uh, we can't pick them all, you know. <laughs> there you go.
you know, might as well just have the trash in one spot and the other spots good, not the trash everywhere. Because, you know, but anyway, I have a kitchen table now. <laughs> Great but, reasons. but the Ferrari is giving me a hard time trying to find blinkers and daytime running lights that don't look like they came off a motorcycle or something that somebody can say, oh, that's, those are Kawasaki blinkers. You know what I mean? And everything today, they're all swoopy, like covered plastic, and they don't accommodate themselves for a car in the 80s. Like, they don't go in. So, anyway, I'm, I'm still thinking. I, like, I, I think so much about it. Oh, look at that. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's enough room for like 50 of those. Well, you, well you'd have them and you pass. <laughs> what right. would I do with the rest of the hole in the bumper? <laughs> oh, is that a cute thing? You know, it's just in case, right? <laughs> Never a good like get them at a, at a trucker place. Yeah, yeah I like them. I need but to. those small little marker lights are, you know, cool. They work, you know, if you don't want to put the big light oh. on there. On your orange, they have to be orange. Orange? Yeah. So you need just cut a lens in. Do you have the back? Do you have any piece of it at all? Uh, I have the original, but they're smashed. Smashed. Uh, okay. And, and the and as I said, I'm sort of I'm running out of money, so I can't invest uh, thousands, thousands of dollars for the light assemblies for a Ferrari in the bumper. Wow. Thousands of dollars for used. That's, used. That, that's why the custom cars are so interesting because you don't have to do what they say you have to do. But it. The car didn't come originally with flat, with daytime running lights. Uh, it has, uh, like on the light switch, you pull it towards it, it's flicker. Like it flicks the lights. Why, why don't you, why and that's all these lights are for, is passing lights. Like flick the lights. Okay. Flashing or whatever. You could put called. something in the hole and paint it orange so it looked like it had lights. Well, I need blinkers too. You know, but uh, no, I want daytime running lights. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to have to flip the headlights up. Yeah. For okay. Daytime, yes. Right. Yeah. So I have to have like Nova Scotia. You have to have daytime running lights, unless it's registered as an antique. And I'm not going to register it as an antique because I think I'm going to have. If I want to drive for summer, it's going to be my everyday driver. Okay. You want because I can't afford to uh, register and insure two cars. Joey's going to drive. Like I don't like bragging summer, about that. Uh, I don't like bragging about being poor, but um, There's the no car bragging. hasn't really done too much. Hasn't eaten much hay. No, but my tobacco and the cats have, like, between the vet bills and problems. Vet and, bills? You're, paying, well, you're spending money on the vets and the cats? Uh, one cat stands me almost $5,000. He got hit by a car, and then he had a nervous problem where he was tearing nose fur, and that cost me hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And then he got a thorn in his side from fighting with my other cat, and that all got infected. And that was like six or seven hundred dollars to get that all cleaned up. And then he had a couple other problems too, but for some reason I can't remember now. But anyway, um, you're kind-hearted to go yeah, get your cat. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's kind of like um, eating at a house at home. <laughs> I believe our us kind hearted people, we, we have the power to stop the world. You know what I mean? Like uh, the world stops and starts at our will just because we're so kind. If I wasn't, if I decide not to be kind, the world won't stop and everybody gets eaten up alive. So every once in a while the world gets stopped just for everybody to catch up. And it's, and, um, it's kind of like, uh, I am almost responsible even for this COVID-19 thing because that Ferrari caused me so much grief in two years that uh, it condemned the entire world. And now things are starting to settle down a little bit as I get the car done. Well, I'm glad because <laughs> it's time. Well, summer's coming. I just went yeah. outside and, and looked at the sun, man. Feel like you're alive when the old sun comes out, eh? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, it feels good when you wake up and the sun's out in the morning and, and, and you know. I never watched the the video where you put that um that kind of you had the can. I didn't have a chance to go back and watch it. Um, 
I can't even remember what you called it, but it was the coat that you put on to verify when you sand that you get all the scratches, nicks out, and any low spots. Yeah. What's that called? Guide coat. The guide coat. Yeah. I, I still got some on there actually in there. And that's just when you take like a spray bomb yeah. and kind of mist it and then yeah. sand. It lets and, you know everything. Okay, because I've never done that. Okay. I have in the past did it with different colors of um, primers and spot putties. Yeah. You know, sometimes when right. you're trying to level things, you use different, slightly, slightly that's different just, colors. That's just kind of making it dummy proof, sort of. Um, it I makes know. it easy because otherwise it's almost sometimes like where my eyesight's not really that good and the lights aren't really that good, I have to go by feel. And like the Ferrari, I leveled that out by feel. Yeah. And then when I sand, I try to use a light and I look at my sand scratches and if I see any lines going the wrong way, when I'm going this way, if I see lines going that way, I know that, ooh, there's a low spot right there. You're but right your right. tactic of spraying makes it easy for you to see that. You don't have to strain and move your head around quite so much yeah. in the light to see it. That's for the YouTubers. We've got a winner. <laughs> His name's Jim Patterson. No. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. This is my Earth Angel, Jim. Say hi, Jim. It's quiet <laughs> here. Like, in the past couple years, this has been a pretty loud, happening, it has a lot been of commotion been. going COVID, on. COVID, you know, COVID shut it down, you know. Yeah. Shut it down, so this is what we're doing. I just got the wheels earlier put on, and uh, just got just got the wheels put on. You know, just playing with it, going forward. I guess we are. are we so already? when you took the valves out of this, and a few were stuck, they were stuck rusty. No, they're, we got they, them free in the end. We did get them you free. You know, like they weren't. But I don't think they were seated. Oh, okay. They were free. They were all moving in the end. They were all moving. Pistons were all. You moving. know, but you probably. Took the head apart. Oh, we did. We took all and the valves out. We took all the pistons out. Like uh, not not too pitted. No, they did nothing look pitted. The pistons look beat up or not beat up. Uh, pitted around the edge where they were seized. Right, the rings were seized right oh, on yeah. the piston. You know what I mean? Yeah. The oil ring was free, but the, the other compression yeah, rings were not. That's very common. Yeah. In when they sit. The oil gallery, we got that hooked up. We didn't get that off before we pulled the head off. So we broke that. Good videos, eh? Man, man, that's good I, TV. I, yeah, uh, you cool. almost have too many. Like, uh, <laughs> a friend of mine dropped in the other night and he said, I spent like four hours watching uh, um, videos of Chad building this um, this right. car. Yeah. And he was said he, hours, one after another, an hour, yeah. like the complete story. Yeah, that's you know, pretty like, basically it. That's what Jolene said. We're gonna yeah. walk her right to the end. I can't wait to, like, we're gonna do Doug's car here in a bit. But I can't wait to get it, you know, get it completed somewhat. I mean, let's face it, it's a journey working on it. It's going to be fun to complete, but just to get on to something else, you know what I mean? Start from the bottom and work my way up and just go from the bottom, you know what I mean? This one was started when we started the YouTube, you know, there was a floor in it. Yeah. The body was going. I want to start from nothing, from ground up um, the floor base and then start and then build something. Yeah, you kind of roughed this out quite a while back. Yeah. And then you let it sit doing well, all these other jobs. I had no choice. Yeah. And no choice. Well, I was bragging before before we put her away. What a baby! I was going to have her ready. I was bragging. Now I'm slowed down again too because we do it all on the on the, you know, we're filming it all, and that just makes it interesting so everybody else can see. That's one of the things that I liked it, or didn't like about the, the when they showed the guy they were building on TV. They didn't show enough of what they were doing on. I know. Yeah, they, and it yeah. was a good story they made up about um, it, but they didn't show enough of the work process. Well, it also, they squeezed it in like two shows. Yeah. And see, like your videos on Facebook or on, um, yeah, on yeah. Facebook, yeah. it's like uh, basically two videos is a show. Yeah. Like two videos is almost an hour. And you've got like 30 videos, so that would be like um, 10 or 15 shows. So that's where you're showing all the detail. Yeah. But if that was squeezed into two shows, you'd have to skip 80% of it. We'd be done by now. Um, <laughs> yeah, plus that. Yeah. All right, we're going to sign off because I want Jolene to get in on the conversation. That's what I want. I want Jolene to get in on the conversation. Come on, baby, come sit down. <laughs>